even though uh, it's very established, if you know a, a pretty good amount of math, like a, even at the undergraduate or graduate level, you can probably make at least a small contribution to math and science. So go, do it. It will make you feel very uh, good and uh, you will have helped the world in some small way. Now my goal is not just to publish those papers, but to help everyone else uh, be inspired to love math and science and understand its purpose in the real world. Okay, thank you. thank you. Achai, you have published any paper. Now we will be having a question from CIT, Central Institute of Technology. Good evening. Hello, Professor Barry. Yeah, uh, myself, Dr. Solar Borgeri. Uh, yeah, my question is very simple to you. Uh, is uh, area and volume, this is very crucial to measure it. So what method you suggest to measure any kind of the area and the volume? Well, I mean, area and volume, they're very established concepts. <laughs> I guess you can just use integrals. Uh, usually those will get you around finding the area and volume of anything in 2D and 3D. Even curved objects. Thank you, sir. So, we are going to have uh, some professor from Binasur Brahma Engineering College. Professor from uh, Binasur Brahma Engineering College. Uh, good evening, uh, Professor Suborna. Uh, I am Montolal Gosumutai from <coughs> Binasur Brahma Engineering College. Uh, my question is, you have talked about the infinity, but I am, I am, I am from mechanical background and engineer background, but I have not much in mathematics. My question is, uh, uh, I have studied uh, this in singularity and <coughs> physics law does not exist. And I want to know your opinion from mathematics point of view, what is your opinion? As far as I know, a black hole or singularity is not quite infinitely small. It's just very, very small on the scale of a micrometer or so. So it's not actually uh, anything infinite because something infinite would just be a point in space. That would be uh, incredibly hard to imagine. What would a point in space look like? How would it even have a gravitational effect? And a it being infinitely small would make it have an almost infinite gravitational effect, if I'm not wrong, which would be extremely bad for the universe in general. So I'm pretty sure that a singularity, at least in terms of a black hole and not in terms of a literal singularity, is not actually infinitely small. I hope that answered the question. Uh, thank you, sir. So. So, yeah. And after this, we'll just be taking three more questions from students. Three more questions from students. Hello, uh, Mr. Bari. Welcome to Boroland. Myself, uh, Shekhar Jyoti Pathak. I am assistant professor at Vineshya Brahma Engineering College and also a research scholar in IIT Guwahati. So, my question is like, uh, while doing research work, we use different types of softwares like S Pen. MATLAB and so on. So for solving different problems we used to give input to those softwares and by doing some coding through mathematical solution they give us the answers. So till date uh, have you encountered people asking you about those complex mathematical simulation part like how it can be made easy or like in publishing way like is it possible to simplify those things because as a research scholars we are finding it difficult like sometimes we understand how it is working but sometimes it is very difficult to understand how mathematical simulation is going on through softwares so what is your point of view in that case i don't work with um a mathematica or matlab i work with uh, much, uh, I work with somewhat simpler uh, softwares, 
my brother does work with MATLAB and it does look somewhat complicated. I'm sure that if you have a strong background in uh, coding, then uh, you'll be able to have a better grasp on it. I don't know especially what to recommend in this case because I have not used uh, MATLAB or Mathematica to any real extent. I'm sorry. So can we expect Mr. Barry to work on it so that it can make positive sense in research work field? Like, uh, if, is it possible for you to think of solving so those complexes in mathematics and getting some simplified solutions that can be easier for people like us to do those particular research works? Well, as far as I know, MATLAB is just uh, for the hard computations. And uh, for the hard computations means that it's basically just a calculator that does uh, advanced work, like takes the integral of a strange function or finds the value of a specific point at a specific location. So uh, I'm not a human calculator, and I don't think there are any better softwares right now than things like MATLAB. So I think you're stuck with softwares like those, and uh, we have to learn how to get used to them instead of longing for a simpler solution, because sometimes there is no solution like that. Uh, thank you. So we'll be having a quick question round. So any X, Y, Z? One. Good evening, Mr. Bari, Professor Bari. I have a question. As you are so interested in math and physics, so do you believe in God? If you do so, then how do you connect God with science? This I... Um... Hello, hello. Um, I'm not sure I want to answer this one. Um, uh, um, okay, sir, I'll, um, okay, so, uh, whether you believe in a God or you don't, uh, I, I don't want to disclose my personal beliefs, uh, because, I mean, I, I don't want disagreement to uh, fester, uh, but I guess if you believe in God, there is not much uh, scientific evidence to prove it, but, uh, but sometimes faith is enough. Uh, that's what I'll keep it to. That's what I'll Thank you, to. sir. Uh, very good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Pazeng Sen uh, I am from Department of Biotechnology, Bodleian University. Uh, I want to ask a question. What is an easy way to become a scientist? Sorry? What is an easy way to become a scientist? I don't think there's an easy way, no. They're not really a way to uh, just uh, do it quickly. You have to uh, learn and get into all of the details and uh, you have to build up a full understanding before you become a scientist and actually do something new. You're just, I guess you can call yourself a science student if you uh, learn uh, what's already there, but you can only call yourself a scientist if you've contributed something new. So to contribute something new, new, you need a very strong foundation. And that can only be done with lots of time and hard work. Hello, sir. Uh, sir. To your left. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. My name is Momota Busumatari from Kokoja Government College. First of all, we are very glad to have you here. My question to you is, at this young age, have you ever thought that you would be an inspiration <laughs> to such a huge number of youngsters? And what made you believe in yourself? So, uh, I, my dad used to run a channel, I run it now. 
uh, for math and science. He thought my abilities uh, were very unusual, so he started recording me doing a few simple math problems, and eventually that grew into a full-time commitment. And once it started getting very popular, some uh, some universities uh, from India invited us, and we thought, sir, uh, why don't we spread the love of math and science? And uh, that was all the way four years ago, and it was a great experience, so I decided, uh, but I did come back for a very long time, until April, when I once again got invitations from several universities, so I came back to India at that time, and that was also a great experience. So I decided to keep spreading uh, a math and science worldwide because of the popularity of my math and science channel, uh, as well as how much I enjoyed uh, speaking to others. So uh, that's really how I got into spreading the love of math and science. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Myself, Akshaya Ghosh from Kokrajar Government College. So, my question is that what was the biggest challenge in your journey till now? Uh, the biggest challenge in my journey has especially been uh, uh, the college courses that I am taking right now. Uh, they have been a very large shock to me because uh, it's I haven't done anything that different from my usual schedule. It really uh, forced me to learn how to manage my time more seriously, and it was a very large commitment. Uh, I honestly thought I wouldn't make it, but through a lot of uh, diligence and perseverance, I was able to make it through. And uh, that experience really matured me, and I. Th uh, it helped me get ready for what I will experience during college in terms of research and uh, course coursework. So this is will be the last question from him. Myself, Abdul Wahid Barwaya from Bineshwar Brahma in Engineering College. So my question is that what makes you so much interest in physics and maths? What makes you so much interest? Well, uh, my dad, because he was a student in math and physics at that uh, time. Uh, you can show my dad on camera. Uh, who's the camera? Hello. Okay. So, uh, he was the one who inspired me to do math and physics. If he was a humanities student, I would be doing history right now. If he was a chemistry student, I'd be doing chemistry. If he was a literature student, maybe I would be a poet right now. I probably certainly wouldn't be here. But uh, his uh, inspiration uh, was what led me to do math and science. And I guess that's what led me to be here because math and science is viewed as the most unusual or the hardest of uh, the school subjects. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, participants from different colleges and different institutions for coming and interacting. And I think we could have continued, but we are running uh, short of time. And uh, we have been instructed to complete the whole program within time. And so we wind up the uh, interactive session here. Thank you so much. Thank you again, everyone for interacting. I hope